This was clearly dropped off by someone. Shots, shots, yep. Tell me you hit him. Got knocked. Initiating madness mode! <laughs> my brakes didn't work! It blew my tires off. Zombie apocalypse. Good afternoon, future murder victims. This is your captain speaking. Please make sure all emotional baggage is safely stowed in your hippocampus as we remind you no one cares about your problems. At this time, I invite you to lament your poor life decisions and make peace with your pathetic gods. Upon exiting the aircraft, please tuck all genitals into your clothing to avoid having them forcefully ripped from your body when approaching terminal velocity. Remember, passengers who do not leave of their own volition will be ejected by force over military island. Please enjoy your impending demise. Player Unknowns Battlegrounds Hello again, you loot-lusting lunatics. My name is Remy Express. Welcome back. I'm excited to be here for another video. Except today's a little different. Today we are talking about how to win in solos. How to go out and get that elusive tasty, succulent, solo chicken dinner. And we're going to talk strategies, what to do, what not to do, and what works well for different people. Now, the first thing we have to talk about when we start to break down what works for winning in PUBG solo is that everybody is different. Every single person watching this video right now is going to be slightly different. There will be skill disparities. There will be a disparity in the understanding that you have of the map, the nooks and crannies, where to hide, how to move, so on and so forth. So the best thing that I can do to break down how to win in PUBG is to first talk very generally about what PUBG is and how you can use the advantages that you have. So let's talk basics about PUBG. What is PUBG? PUBG is a survival game. First and foremost, not necessarily a gunfighting game. Some people would say you have to at least get in one gunfight, but we've seen that proved wrong many, many times. There have been the Quaker pacifists out there that go and win games with just strategy without getting a single kill. Those games are hilarious to watch. At least the endings of them are. PUBG is a game of temporary tactical advantages what you want to do when you are playing solo is maximize whatever your tactical advantage is and that's what we're going to talk about today now in this video i don't always make the best choices in your game you're probably not always going to make the best choices but you have to work with the situation that you are in the first thing you do if you want to be successful in this game is you make a plan, okay? In this game, I dropped in center of the map. My plan was, I want to move as little as possible throughout the course of this game. I want to put myself in a position, center map, where no matter where that circle goes, I have to travel the minimum distance possible. Rosshawk is a good place for that. Apartments, good place for that. Getting in that center of the map means that I have to travel less and therefore create less noise, put myself in a position where I'm not exposing myself to many people. Now, in solo games, you're not in as much danger when you're traveling. So it's not bad to go to the outskirts and loot where you think you'll be safe. But you got to remember, a lot of other people are thinking the same thing. I personally don't mind taking the early fights, especially if I get a halfway decent weapon. If I get an automatic weapon, if I get a shotgun, again, I'm always going to want to maximize my tactical advantage. So if I get a shotgun, I want to get in nice and close and make sure I know where they are and they don't know where I am. In this situation, I heard somebody walking around next door. 
That's why I'm crouched. That's why I'm coming and peeking the corner in third person. Now I know where this guy is. He has no idea where I am until I start shooting at him. Huge advantage. Also, come around, use the high ground on him. He figured out where I was, but I had already done so much damage to him. Major problem for him, game over. Now I also noticed that door opened when I was fighting this guy. As soon as I started making noise, this guy below us to the south figured out where we were. I took a few shots at him, and what I'm gonna try to do now is use the advantage that I have over him, which is I know where he is, at least for the moment. I'm gonna switch positions, move in close. I have an automatic weapon. Now I made a little bit of a tactical blunder here by not clearing the other side of the house. Had this guy come around on the left side of me, I could have been in trouble. I think I know where he is, but he changed positions too. Great tactical choice. Put me at a bit of a disadvantage. I missed a few shots there. Gotta come around. And I'm tracking him. I like to push, I like to play aggressive. People are very thrown off by aggressive play. I cannot overstate in this game how important it is to have a good headset. I knew exactly where this guy was because I heard every footstep he made as he frantically ran in this house. Now I'm using my third person to peek, see where he is, and we're gonna have a gunfight in the hallway here. Yeah, he's peeking, exposing himself, and this is just a game of who gets the lucky headshot first? Or the skilled headshot. In this case, he uh, he poked out. You know, that's, that's anybody's battle there. I think that I did just enough damage to him to have the advantage. But, uh, again, knowing I hit those shots on him gave me the confidence to push into that house. I don't want to give him the opportunity to heal. Temporary tactical advantage. If you don't have yourself a good headset, go get one. It will help you win games. So here we are in Roshawk. I have two kills right away. I know that I have not cleared the town out yet because I saw one other person. I'm going to go ahead and heal up, take what I can off of these guys, and wait for the opportunity for the other people in town to make a mistake and let me know what they're doing. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean sitting still, but in certain situations, that is the best thing to do tactically. Now here, I normally wouldn't have broken a window, but I knew where the other person in town was. I heard the vehicle moving and I'm running toward that sound. I want to get in a position, again, where I know where he is and he does not know where I am. I hear the vehicle stop, south side of the road on Roshawk. I'm gonna use my third person, see if I can't combine what I can see with what I can hear and figure out where this guy is. Took a little bit of a risk exposing my head there over the half wall, but I am 90% sure based on what I'm hearing and seeing that this guy is in the two-story red house at my 12 o'clock at 70, 85 rather, at this point. So, do I want to get aggressive if I don't know exactly where he is? It depends. Am I being pushed from the outside? Right now, I've done a bit of a sweep on my way in, I took a look. I don't have anybody pushing from behind. As you'll see here in a second, I'm gonna use my camera and make sure that there's nobody behind me. If I'm in any danger at all, I'm probably gonna to wanna to push this guy and force the fight. I am very exposed from behind right now, but I don't feel like I'm in danger. I know that this guy is gonna to have to move. He's gonna be feeling the pressure of the circle moving in here. I don't have to worry about that. I know I've got meds and he does not necessarily know that I'm here. If he has a good headset, he has heard me running up, so he knows that there is an enemy in the vicinity, but he doesn't know exactly where I am. Again, temporary tactical advantage right here. Had he not come out, I might have decided to use that plane to push in on him. Okay, boom. I get in a gunfight, create noise. Then I take shots from an unknown position. I immediately take cover. I have no idea where this guy's firing from. You see a lot of people make the terrible decision once they kill somebody to run right in and grab that loot. All you're doing in a lot of those situations is just giving what loot you have to the guy who's got Overwatch on you. You gotta remember it's about surviving first. It doesn't matter how good the loot is if you're dead. So I'm using third person, trying to figure out 
triangulate where the sounds came from. In this situation, I'm not going to be very successful on finding this guy. What likely happened is he took a few pot shots, realized I'm going to have eyes on the vehicle. He probably wanted to kill me and take that vehicle because the circle is quite a ways away. Realized that he wasn't going to uh, likely be successful in getting in there and stealing the vehicle without getting into a gunfight. And he likely peeled off as a result of that. Even if we think he's gone, we need to be constantly, constantly vigilant about knowing our surroundings, taking in information from our environment, visual information, audio information. Everything plays a role in this game. Constantly moving, trying to move so that if I don't know where he is and he is in the vicinity, maybe I can get him to take another shot at me. That is all information. Even if I take a little bit of damage, I know I have meds. I know I have loot coming here. Okay, at this point, I'm exposing myself. I'm moving quickly, trying to get him to take shots at me if he's still in the vicinity. I'm not getting anything from him, so I deem the risk worthwhile here to move in and loot. But look at what I'm doing. I actually learned this from watching my buddy Average Sniper play. He comes from PC where if you stand still, you are dead. The same thing is absolutely true here on Xbox, especially now that people are getting better. Standing still is death. When I go in and I loot, I am constantly moving even while I'm in the start menu. Practice that. It will save your life. Sure, you'll take some damage sometimes, but if you sit still, that is exactly what that guy is waiting for on Overwatch. He will hit you with the headshot and, you know, good luck. Head back to the lobby. G, G. I've determined at this point that this person has probably peeled off. I'm going to go in for one more quick looting session, see what I can grab. And then I'm going to take this car and get out of town. We got to get moving. This is a good opportunity now to reflect on some of the things that we've talked about. Number one, make a plan. Okay. My plan was come to the center of town. It's going to, center of the map rather, it's going to help me move as little as possible. Uh, secondly, maybe I did not touch on this, but just as important as making a plan, in fact, a part of making a plan is to decide what is your goal in this game? Are you going for kills or are you trying to win the game? Some people would argue that those two things are not mutually exclusive. I think that they absolutely are. Okay, yes, you sure may have to get some kills in order to win the game. Oftentimes you do. 90% of the time you have to kill at least the last guy. But if you're focused only on getting kills, many, many times that is not the way to win the game. You put yourself at unnecessary risk of having a lot of other factors play in, making noise, attracting other people, having somebody come in and clean you up when you have taken a bunch of damage. It's unnecessary risk if your goal is to win the game. If you're going to win the, if you're trying to win the game, you only want to take fights when you have to or when you are maximizing your tactical advantages. So you have the upper hand. That's when you want to take fights if you want to win the game. So always ask yourself that question. If you start feeling the itch to go get kills, play a few games where you go get kills. My buddy Apollo and I. We, we will drop in in duos five, six times at school or military base if we feel like just getting in the action because sometimes th that impulsivity will derail you on your way to a win. And we might see that later in this game. Now here we find ourselves at another important part of the game. What to do when you have to travel. The best laid plans alone will not win you a game in PUBG. We see here that yes, I landed in the center of the map. That's great. I don't have to travel as far as say somebody who landed in Severny or went to Yasnaya Pulyana, but it didn't put me in a position where I could easily walk in and sneak in, which was kind of my goal. I want to make as little noise and attract as little attention as possible on my way to the win. Here, I have to take a vehicle. I have to cross a bridge. Any of you that play PUBG with any sort of regularity know that the bridges are death. Here, I stroll across it, no problem. It's one of the very, very rare occasions. But as I'm driving, I am making a plan. Okay, my plan here 
is to get over the bridge and assess my situation. See what's around me. It just so happens when I got to the bridge, I immediately heard vehicles. I put some shots on this guy. I want to get over and see what he's doing, where he's heading. He decides to switch cars. It's a poor decision for him. Yeah, not sure if he knew that I was on Overwatch. He certainly didn't know I had an 8x scope on my AK. I mean, who plays like that? But didn't work out well for him there. Hearing more contact, I'm making a ton of noise here, so in the back of my head I'm thinking, okay, no matter what happens here, I gotta get moving really, really soon or I'm gonna be in trouble. I'm thinking that. Let's see if I actually make a good decision. Making a ton of noise. Anybody in the AO is very aware that there is somebody with an AK close by. I make a good decision to get back to the car here using what cover I have from the defilade. I'm just gonna make sure that I have full health. Managing your inventory is unbelievably important. If you are 5% low on health and you get the opportunity to take a booster, do it. It could save your life in a gunfight and it's one less booster that you're giving to the next guy, you know, in the event of your untimely death. And now's where some of the mistakes start to come in. My gut told me to get in the car and start moving towards center circle. But a little devil on my shoulder said, you know what? You've gotten some good shots off. There's going to be more people coming across the bridge. I made a decision inconsistent with my plan, which was to play smart, not be impulsive. I got the bloodlust. It happens, people. It happens. I'm checking my surroundings, that's all good, but I knew more people would be coming. And here I see this guy about to make another car transition. I think, ah, blood! But it's a poor decision. He spots me on the hill. I see him head up the hill and I'm thinking to myself, this guy, I see him slowing down in the vehicle. This guy probably has a sniper rifle. He's probably gonna try to zone in on me. I immediately take cover and you're going to see me start to keep my eight times over the top of the natural cover that the hill provides there. I'm waiting for this guy to poke his head up. Meanwhile, I've been making a ton of noise. Anybody around who's aggressive enough knows where my position is, has the opportunity to move on my position. And then I get sidetracked. Watch what happens from the right. There's the sniper. Almost lost the game right there. There goes Evil Knievel over my head. Well played, man. Got the bloodlust, took my eye off the prize for a second, made a couple of poor decisions, almost lost the entire game because of it. This guy likely has an eight times or at least a four times. He put several very accurate shots on me. And now I've got multiple people on multiple sides of me and I have almost gotten myself into a situation where I'm dead because of impulsivity. Stick with your plan if your plan is to win the game. Now, I've said I've made a couple of bad decisions, but I should also talk about a couple of the things that I'm doing that are good. You notice when I go back up to try to get a view of where this guy is, I'm using my natural cover, using the hill to my advantage there. I don't want to expose my entire body. I get into fights with people where they figure out where I am and they will leave cover completely, show me their entire body to take shots at me. And I, I thank them as I'm stealing all of their loot and drinking their delicious energy drinks, but it's a poor, poor tactical decision. You, you almost never have to leave cover completely in order to get shots on somebody. Just so you know, use your cover. Here I go again, terrible, impulsive decision. Uh, Gary, if you're watching, that one was for you, buddy. Saw a package, immediately abandoned all plans. Got to go for the package, right? Nothing in the package. Could have died. A lot of times people will sit up on the hill and just wait for idiot moves like that and take the headshot while you're checking the packages. But PUBG is a game where you can make terrible decisions and you can get away with them sometimes, as we just saw. So back to the planning phase. I know I'm in the circle. That's important. I am now thinking, where do I want to be 
close to center circle. We're sticking with that same theme. You know, in my head, I'm thinking I want to be somewhere where I can travel the least amount of distance while simultaneously attracting the least amount of attention. That's very, very important in the late game. The more attention you draw to yourself by making noise, the more likely it is that somebody is going to get that shot off on you that either finishes you or puts you so low that somebody nearby can finish you. So I went by the building. I immediately noticed when I circled the building that there was a vehicle there. Likely means that there's somebody there. I do not want to run into a position where I get out of my vehicle and they have overwatch on me immediately and put me down. So I'm driving around. I know there's another complex over here. I'm also checking the rocks. I oftentimes like to put myself in a position, even if it means I have to travel a little further, where I know that I can't be shot from behind or that there's a very low probability of somebody being on a boat. And you find that oftentimes on the rocks. When I approach this next set of buildings, I see again, there's a Jeep there. That means that if somebody is still there, they could be in any one of those buildings. And I'm kind of rolling the dice if I decide to stop. Who knows what building they're in? Who knows what angle they're going to shoot me from? So I decide to bide my time. I'm going to drive around a little bit and I'm probably gonna make some more bad decisions. In fact, now that I'm this far through making the video, I might wanna go back and consider calling this winning the game despite making horrible decisions. But I'm gonna go a different way with this and instead of uh, saying that this decision is inconsistent with my plan, I'm gonna call it spontaneous brilliance. You have to be able to pull an audible in this game. I couldn't get into any of the building complexes I wanted to get into. I decided I was driving around and there weren't people shooting at me, so I would try to see where the next circle went. Saw the opportunity to get a drop, went for it. Now here, I wanna make sure that my weapon is loaded if I get into a situation where I have to jump out. So I quickly switch into the passenger seat, reload my weapon, right back in the driver's seat. There's an element of luck there. You know, somebody with good enough marksmanship could have taken me out got away with another one in this situation. While I'm driving here, doing a little bit of housekeeping, making sure that I have what I need on my weapons for the inevitable moment when the gunfight comes. And I'm just kind of staying center circle. I'm staying in locations where I know I'm minimizing the chance of taking shots, right? I've been through these multiple times. Now, this doesn't mean people aren't rotating, but I am in a wide open area, so it makes the likelihood that people are going to be running around out there lower than say driving around complexes or in highly wooded areas. Now here's another poor decision. I see this guy driving around and I start to circle with him. I'm kind of deciding whether or not I want to engage. And at some point, the bloodlust took over again. I decided, you know what? I wanna to try to ram this guy and get in a fight. Couldn't quite ram him. I uh, decided to stop the car. He was close enough. I wanted to put shots on him while he was driving. And this guy decided, you know what? I want to fight too. And uh, we traded potato aim until uh, his vehicle just basically drove him into the path of my bullets. Luckily there, I had the Groza. And man, that gun will just rip you apart. As a general rule of thumb, I do not like to loot in the late stages of the game. A rule of mine is I don't really loot when there's under 20 people left, if I can avoid it. Now in this situation, I did have some things that I needed. Uh, and I also had kind of just decided that I wanted to go for kills. That didn't mean I don't wanna win the game. And it's a poor decision here. You know, I'm taking shots. Very, very bad decision to ram that guy. He got away, I made a ton of noise. But you have to go with what you get. I've created a situation for myself here where I have exposed my position, but I also created a situation where I'm in the circle and I have the ocean to my back, which is one of the things that is consistent with my plan. So I, I know people are taking shots at me, but I'm using the information that I'm getting from this situation. So I now know that there are at least one person over in that complex because they're taking shots at me. I guess technically I knew that anyway, because there was a vehicle there, but it's now been confirmed. So 
I find myself in a situation here where I was lucky enough to get off a heal. I was lucky enough to have those boosters that I looted so that I could get my health going back up. And I fall back into a position where I can move and the people that were shooting at me no longer know where I am. Very, very important in any gunfight, whether it's squads, duos, or solo, if you find yourself in a gunfight and you've given your opponent information about your position, use that against them. Change your position. Change it drastically. Change it minimally. Do not keep poking out in the same position and let them use that information to create a plan where they can take you out. How many of you are thinking these are unnecessary shots here? And boom, I expose myself to somebody with an AWM or maybe an M24, maybe even a car. That was a big gun. Okay, they were pretty close to doing some serious damage to me there. I didn't have to take those shots. I was, however, worried about having somebody that could see me. I was worried about laying prone there for too long and having somebody else move up on the rocks behind me. So, took the shots, did a lot of damage to the guy, wasn't able to put him down. What did I do immediately afterward? Switch positions. Immediately, I exposed myself, switch positions. Now, we're down to almost 10 people left in the game. My goal now is to try to get as much information as I can from who is near me and what's going on in my environment and give as little information to my opponents as humanly possible. Information in these final circles is so unbelievably valuable. Knowing where your opponents are will let you dictate the terms of the battle. And if you can get in a situation where they do not know where you are, the advantage is tremendous. Now, I have seen this person hanging around the tree and I wanted to wait until I had the perfect opportunity to take him out. I saw some legs, got a little bit impulsive. Didn't make a ton of noise, but I let him know that there's somebody in this direction. You'll notice I'm constantly panning back around. I do know that there's people to my east. I took a sniper shot from there and I almost killed a guy from the east. Now, I notice my opportunity here. I see this guy moving out in the open. I'm not gonna expose myself again until I have this kill. I am gonna put myself in a better position though because he does not know where I am. Quick opportunity, take the guy out of a position where he can move up on me if, if the situation arises where I have to focus on my east. I think that's a good fight there. I had all the advantages and I was able to use them. That was a poor decision. I thought maybe that was somebody's head. Here we go. Another guy moving in from the west. I have the opportunity. He's out in the open. Why not take those shots there? I'm fully in cover. He's out in the open. Learn how to lead your shots and you'll get a lot of those kills right there. Not a terrible decision. Now, I was lucky enough here. Lucky enough to get circled. This rarely, rarely happens. When it does happen, being in the situation I'm in is about the best situation you can get. I've cleared two guys off of my side that were trying to push the wedge into the circle. That doesn't mean that there's nobody there, but in this situation, I know where the other two guys are, right? I used the information that I had. I knew that there was a sniper shot that came from the east, the northeast, and I knew that there was a guy up in the rocks. Now that I see that there's only three people alive, I know that they're both coming from the north and the east. I have cover, I have the circle, it's time to play the, some would say boring, but tactically intelligent game of waiting, gathering information. The other thing to consider in this situation is that both of these guys have to move toward my circle. Even if they are pretty far away from each other right now, the odds are that they are going to encounter each other on their way to the circle before they encounter me. So I want to stay hidden and I want to give them every opportunity to get in a fight and eliminate each other before I have to expose myself to harm. It goes back to what I was harping on earlier in the video and there one goes, he's down. 
you don't want to expose yourself to gunfights you don't have to take if your objective is to win the game. That's what we're trying to do here. Some point in this game, I transitioned into wanting to get kills. I got very, very lucky. I went back into that mindset of, oh yeah, I want to win this game. Time to make good decisions. I almost have circle here. And I have the advantage, again, of knowing where this guy is. You probably saw him poke his little head up. Oh, and that's why I'm looking over there at 85, give or take. I know where he is. He is desperately trying to figure out where I am. I equip a grenade here. My current plan is when this guy starts moving, I'm going to try to get a grenade up over into his position without giving away my position, try to do some damage to him, maybe even get an easy kill. This is one of the worst times that you can exhibit impulsive behavior. Any of you guys who have been into the final circle, you know what it feels like in this moment. Even though you have all the advantages, which I do, I have almost all of the advantages, it is still a heart-pounding, anxiety-driving moment because anything can happen. <clears throat> you have to hit your shots. The pressure is on. Now, one of the things in retrospect I'm not doing here is making good plans. I know that I'm really close to the circle, but I kind of am taking that for granted. I'm focused on this grenade. I want to get this grenade into position. I haven't pulled the pin yet, but I know he's going to be moving any second. The storm is pushing him. I should have been thinking about where my next cover is in this circle. In my mind, I'm thinking, no big deal. I can stay in cover and be in the circle here. Here he comes. Worst snade in history, terrible plan, and now I'm pushed out into the open. Luckily for me, got you, bitch. Damn. <laughs> luckily for me, I hit the money shot there, talked a little shit, but I got in a bad situation. I got pushed out of cover due to poor planning getting caught up on one idea of trying to throw that grenade and it almost lost the game for me. But sometimes in PUBG, the good decisions and the bad decisions coalesce into a win. And I was lucky enough, made enough good decisions to pull this one out. In summation, if I had to give a couple of rules that will help you win more games in solo in PUBG, it would sound like this. Make a plan, number one. Number two, make decisions that are consistent with the plan that you made. Number three, create temporary tactical advantages. Be aware of the weapons that you're using and the terrain that you're using to fight. Maximize those tactical advantages. Take fights where you have the advantage. That will win you more games than any other single decision that you make. Finally, avoid impulsive decisions. Avoid that impulsivity. If you have a good loadout, don't stop in the middle of the open and, and grab a package. Sometimes it'll work out. More often than not, it won't. If you enjoyed this video and you stuck around this long watching it, I really appreciate your support. Do me a favor, leave a like on the video. Let me know that this is something that you're interested in seeing in the future. Leave a comment below. What did you like? What helped you? What didn't help you? And subscribe if you haven't already. All you have to do to subscribe is hit that little blue button above the word subscribe on your screen right now. Come join our growing community. We'd love to have you. Thank you guys so much for your support. Hope you have a wonderful week and I will catch you for the next video.